Do not mess with my family, I will destroy you. Okay so this goes way back and still leaves me fuming. This is my very first post will be probably long winded but there is a reason. Background, I will call myself Daisy qualified as mechanical engineer in the mid 1980s working in textiles, in a little African country, players. At the consultant with carte blanche, Ed was there to assess performance but also to investigate why a profitable company takes a nosedive within 18 months. The villains are Bob, not Bon. Story is long, take a break get yourself a coffee tea shake cocktail whatever rocks your boat. I was part of a management team employed on behalf of an NGO non-government organization company funded by the Commonwealth and IMF International Monetary Fund to help set up viable labor-intensive industry for this country in the mid-1990s. To start with, this was a dream job. Free luxury accommodation in a secured village that had, tennis court swimming pool guest lodge my contract included, free electric, water and telephone landline there was no broadband at that the time you used your landline to dial up, smirking face, no mobiles at this time. Free private schooling for my three children a monthly allowance note not salary great pension and full gold medical private medical insurance. The catch was that my husband was not allowed to work permanently. He could consult for companies but not be employed this was part of legal requirement for me to get work and residential permit, I was the total breadwinner. I was respected by the management team and my employees. I love the people of this nation, the culture, the warmth and the willingness to learn, the majority of the employees were illiterate when they started employment, I helped set up schools to improve their verbal and written skills, not only in English but also in the local official language. I woke each day ready to tackle the challenge, see the staff develop especially the women learning and gaining independence and see the company flourish, become profitable the rewards were amazing. Because the company becomes very profitable it needed to be sold as a going venture to investors in the country. This was part of agreement with the CDC Commonwealth Development Corporation and IMF International Monetary Fund who up to that point were our bosses. The sale included a clause that assured the continued employment of the local employees for 18 months after the sale. The order books were full, the bank balance very healthy on the day the new owners came in. The new owners have their H headquarters in Southeast Asia. New CEO Nob and CFO Bon come in trouble begins. Their first order of the day was to remove the majority of the previous management and bring their team in. I was told, in no uncertain terms that as a female I should be home breeding and not working, my time was up humph. The company starts losing money within 9 months. This new team started blaming the local employees as the reason for the losses. Head office send over a consultant, independent observer, We'll call him Ed to feedback proposals, solutions and what was the root cause. Ed was empowered to act on behalf of the group CEO in Southeast Asia, this is important for later. I had to have medical leave for 8 weeks. Whilst on medical leave the CEO makes decision to cut off free private education, and no more free utilities or food allowance without adjusting my allowance so I went from being well rewarded for the job to having to manage with a salary that was only 100 US dollars and pay for private school and all other household costs that were previously incorporated into contract. Yes the company can do this, basically a new contract was underwritten as part of the new ownership as a true expat employee. The company owns you totally they own the permits that allow you to work and live in the country. I made a formal complaint, but was told if I did not like it, the company would inform the country government that I had been fired due to not being qualified. This would have meant 48 hours to leave the country with no support no possibility of getting any of our personal belongings shipped, frozen bank account as the local government would see this as fraud, possible police record, my family would lose everything and become destitute. On my return to work I was demoted and they placed their own man to run my previous department engineering and maintenance. I go to introduce myself to my new manager let's name him Bob. Bob refuses to shake hands and states that he is there to make my life hell and remove me from company, I saw red. No one threatens my family's well-being and gets away with it. 
This is how I ensured the whole management lost everything. Start investigation on what is going on. In the first 12 months that this new management team has taken over the company is now losing money and in serious debt. New equipment that had been installed by the NGO has to be sold to help pay salaries. The pension fund was found to be underfunded, was let go management blamed the NGO for having taken money out when they sold the company. This new management team has, somehow, brought over extended families. Older children were all being educated in top universities either in South Africa or even the UK, younger children in top private schools. There was also extended house staff including drivers, all of this coming out as losses in the company books. To top it up I discovered that my new manager's university doctorate degree was fake. This management team treat the local staff as subhuman. I had had enough of this bullshit. TME to sort these wankers out. Stage 1, prove current boss is not qualified in what he says he is. Talk to Ed about my suspicions. Showed him the transcript from telephone conversation with the university that he had claimed as having a PhD from. We set a trap. There was a set of machines that were seriously underperforming, Ed and I work out a plan. I walk into lead meeting late, I was to be quiet until Ed asked me to contribute, we wanted to give Bob enough rope. In the meeting I sit quietly whilst Bob blames the local operators, the local maintenance fitters and everyone else for all the woes that are happening, including why we can't meet the order book demands. Ed sweetly asks if there is a possibility of a mechanical issue, Bob denies it. Ed then asks me for my opinion. I explained that Bob has been changing suppliers of critical components to cheaper versions but that still costs the same on the official books. I had evidence that demonstrates that Bob was receiving a significant percentage of the difference on the side whilst company charged the inflated prices. I also stated that I could fix the problem using the correct components. If I was wrong then by all means fire me. Ed sets a challenge to me and Bob, each one of us has a team of fitters and our chosen components. Bob storms to shop floor and does his usual screaming at everyone. I go down and explain what I was trying to achieve and how it would benefit the operators and get the project going. At end of week we both had to report back to management team. Ed had asked a few operators, mechanics and production supervisors how Bob worked and if there was any attempt to sabotage my project. Needless to say Bob did try everything to ensure my team was not successful but he never had the support of the locals and his team. They already hated him. Ed gives Bob a chance to come clean but Bob still stated I was a liar and knew nothing. Ed stands up goes to the door opens it and outside is Bob's family. Ed's investigation had confirmed what I had stated as such Ed had organized drivers and contacts to fly to South Africa pick up all of Bob's children from schools and universities, and for those in UK the university was informed no company funds would be forthcoming for the one child that was being educated. Ed proceeded to give each of Bob's family plane tickets for the following morning. Company security guards and police were sent with Bob to his bank where funds were frozen due to fraudulent transactions. Bob accepted a plea bargain, he will not be welcome in Africa ever and his home country police were informed. When Bob landed in his home country the head office had organized a police e-court. Bob was unemployable and his family greatly shamed. I hope he got his just desserts couldn't care less stage 1 complete. Stage 2 The Final Event Prove Nob and Bon have been defrauding the company and country. Nob and Bon were still in charge of the company, now 18 months from takeover. The stated clause that the workforce could not be touched was up. Nob and Bon called an all-site meeting. They stood up front with tears running down on how the NGO had lied about the company orders and profitability. How they are trying their best but the company is really struggling and people will lose their jobs. They announced a reduction of 66% of the workforce. I had been working closely with Nob and Bond's secretary, the accountant and the purchasing officer, so had been able to access the info needed survival kicked in. As I was part of the original management team, I had the original accounts that were audited as part of the CDC and IMF funding for the NGO. 
In the 18 months I accumulated information on the losses being shown and the missing money going offshore into private accounts and not the head office accounts. You see these two did not respect women or the locals, they assumed that what was being done would not be picked up. If they had bothered to understand who they employed in the office, they would have found that the purchase officer and the accounting supervisor were qualified accountants with close links to government, the banks and they were. You're right women, I had explained to the secretary, the accountant and purchasing officer that there would be a time when we needed evidence to safeguard money and people's livelihood. So the files had been building from there six months to now a year later, I talked to Ed and give him the evidence we had been accumulating, it was what Ed needed. Nav calls me to the office to tell me that I am redundant with immediate effect. He also stated that for me to be able to stay in the country to sort out my family I would now owe the company rent that was twice my given allowance, I lost it. I literally turned around and explained that in less than 24 hours, Nob would have no future, his family would have no future, no matter where they run, they would be found. I already knew this to be true as Ed already had the wheels in motion. This time the group chairman walks in on my heated conversation together with the IMF representative and Bon in tow. Nob was fired on the spot loaded onto a plane with an international warrant for fraud. The IMF persuade this fully, Nob was screwed. In this Southeast Asian country a stain on your trustworthiness means you are untouchable. Bon didn't dare much better, he was locally arrested, D need access, Fine and the IMF did the same to him as what had happened to Nob, only difference was that Bon willingly ratted Nob for all he was worth. As for me, the company limped along but I no longer trusted anyone from that group. Myself and my husband found employment in another regional country, this time both of us had work permits and airtight contracts. No one will ever screw us over or make us feel like slaves. The message was do not threaten my children or my family, I will destroy you by waiting until you hang. Not proud just realistic, update, after I left this company I actually ran a little guest lodge, wanted a break from the chaos, only to get into other type of chaos. I now live in the UK, came home to my husband's hometown. Some other stories will be told though they will not beat this one, these stories will go under under entitled people, choosing beggars or petty revenge.